Welcome to our webinar today on using SMTP with Amazon Simple Email Service. I'm Jen Steele, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Amazon SES, and with me I have Chris Wheeler, our Lead Technical Program Manager, and Justin Kreitz, our Lead Software Development Engineer. They'll be gathering your questions during the webinar, and we'll be answering them at the end. Today we have a pretty simple agenda. To make sure we're all on the same page, I'll go through a brief overview of Amazon SES and how to get started. Then we'll jump into using SMTP with Amazon SES. We'll go through creating credentials in detail, and then we'll look at a few examples of how you might use it. After that, Chris and Justin will jump into your questions. And just so you know, again, the slides and presentation will be posted, and you will receive an email with those links. So what is Amazon Simple Email Service? Amazon SES is a highly scalable and cost-effective bulk and transactional email sending service for businesses and developers. Amazon SES eliminates the complexity and expense of building an in-house email solution or licensing, installing, and operating a third-party email service. The service integrates with other AWS services, making it easy to send emails from applications being hosted on services such as Amazon EC2, and is an easy-to-use web service that lets you send email and maximize your business's deliverability, the proportion of email that is delivered to the inbox. In other words, with minimal setup, you can get maximum deliverability, you can send a lot of email as often as you need to, we build in all primary aspects of email management to let you focus on your core business. So let's take a look at how SES works. A client application acting as an email sender makes a request to Amazon SES to send email to one or more recipients. If the request is valid, Amazon SES composes an email message based on the request parameters and then queues it for delivery. The message is routed over the internet to the recipient's internet service provider, or ISP. The ISP then delivers the message to the recipient's inbox. If the recipient's email address doesn't exist, the ISP sends a bounce notification to Amazon SES. The service then forwards the notification to the sender. If you have an, a recipient who does not want to receive the message, he or she can register a complaint with the ISP by clicking their spam button. The ISP sends the complaint to Amazon SES, which then forwards it to the sender. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about Amazon SES pricing. We have a flat rate of 10 cents per thousand email messages. We do charge for data transfer out, but your first gig each month is free. If you choose to send email with attachments, the attachments are billed separately at 12 cents per gig. And like many other AWS services, we do have a free tier. If you are an Amazon EC2 user, you can send 2,000 messages each day for free when you call SES from your EC2 instance directly or through AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So let's talk about how you get started with Amazon SES. Basically, you sign up for AWS, you verify an email address, and you test out your environment. And when you're satisfied, you request production access to Amazon SES. You proceed to send your email via SMTP, assuming you're using SMTP since that's what this webinar is about, or you use one of two different APIs. Finally, you use the feedback that we provide to improve your sending but I'll talk about these steps in a little bit more detail right now. As I said, first you need to sign up for AWS if you don't already have an account. You can get started with any of our services in a matter of minutes. When you first have an AWS account, you'll be in the SES sandbox, where you can only send to or from verified email addresses, and you have a testing quota of 200 messages per day. Really, this is where you're making sure you can get set up. You know you're in the sandbox by the big yellow box at the top of this window here in your management console, or if your sending quota is only 200 emails per 24-hour period. In order to test SES, you first need to verify an email address. You should note that Amazon SES has a limit of 100 verified email addresses. These are the only addresses that can be used to send email. 
And as I said before, while you're in the sandbox, you can only also only send to those verified email addresses. In other words, you can really only email yourself. Once you have production access, you can only send from an, a verified address, but you can send to any email address in the world. And we'll review how to get production access in a moment. But to start the verification process, click the Verify a New Sender button and enter the email address you want to verify in the dialog box that appears. Then you go to the inbox for the address you're verifying and find the verification email. Click on the URL or copy and paste it into your browser in order to verify the email address. You'll get to a thank you page telling you that you're ready to start using that email address with SES. If it's been a long time since you sent that address the verification email, you might get an error message when you try to click the link. If that's the case, just go back into the management console and re-enter that email address for verification. If it has been an hour since you requested that your email address be verified and you have not received your email, there are two things that we have found are common culprits. The first is that you should check your spam folder. The second is that you should make sure that the email address you're trying to verify is able to accept external email. Okay, so I've talked about them a few times, but I wanted to take a moment to review the limitations of the sandbox since that's where we've been working so far. You have a tiny quota. You can only send 200 messages a day. You can only send one message per second or one TPS. You can send from or to verified email addresses. As I said, you can only email yourself. Here in the sandbox, you run your proof of concept. It's a testing environment. The production environment looks different. When you're in the production environment, your quota will be 10,000 messages per day and will continue to rise as you send production email through SES. You will also see your TPS continue to rise as well, although you start at five. And while you can still only send from verified email addresses, you can send to any email address in the world. You'll need to request production access in order to see the benefits we saw on our last slide. Again, you can see that you do not have production access as long as you only have a 200 message per day quota and you have a big yellow box at the top of the management console. To get this process started, you click the Request Production Access button. This will take you to the Amazon SES production access form. Please fill it out completely. Production access requests take up to one business day to process, and if our team has any questions for you, we'll get in contact with you. Please note that we will be looking at production access for the account you're currently logged into. If you have multiple AWS accounts, make sure you're logged into the correct one before filling out this form. Once we have processed your request, we'll send you email confirmation, again, to the primary email address of that AWS account. However, if you do not regularly check that account, there is a way to easily tell whether you have production access. Just check the management console. A quota of more than 200 messages per day means that your production access has been granted. So as you can see in this view, we've moved up to a production quota and the big yellow box asking you to request production access or verify a new sender is gone. When your management console looks like this screenshot, you can send email to any email address, no recipient verification necessary. Once you have production access, you should start sending your production email through SES. By sending as much of your production email as you can through SES, you'll find that your sending quota will increase naturally. And now the part you've all been waiting for. Let's move on to SMTP. Once you have production access, you'll need to generate your SMTP credentials. Please note that you can generate SMTP credentials while you're in the sandbox as well. To start the process, no matter w whether you're in the sandbox or in production mode, log into your AWS console, go to the Amazon SES tab, and click on SMTP settings on the left. When you get to the SMTP settings page, click on the Create My SMTP Credentials button. You may have to scroll down a bit to find it. A dialog box will appear that will allow you to create your SMTP user. You can use the suggested username, or even better, you can create a username that is consistent with your internal naming policies. 
Amazon SES uses AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, to manage SMTP credentials. The IAM username is case sensitive and may contain only alphanumeric characters and the following symbols, a plus underscore equals comma period at sign or dash. SMTP credentials consist of a username and password. When you click the create button, SMTP credentials will be generated for you. You'll see this dialog box next if your credentials are created successfully. Please note that this is the only time that your SMTP credentials will be available. If you misplace them, you'll have to generate a new user. Click the Download Credentials button to download the credentials as a CSV file. Alternately, you can click Show User SMTP Security Credentials. At that point, your security credentials will display. You can copy and paste them from this window. If you're like me, you'll both download them and copy and paste them. I've always preferred the belt and suspenders method. Once you're finished, you can close the dialog box by clicking the Close Window button. After you've created your SMTP credentials, you'll be returned to the SMTP settings page on the SES tab of the AWS Management Console. You use the credentials you just created in conjunction with the settings on this page in order to configure your systems to use SMTP with Amazon SES. The server name is email-smtp.us-east-1.amazonaws.com. You'll want to use port 465, use Transport Layer Security, or TLS, and use your SMTP credentials that you just generated for authentication. I wanted to take a moment to talk about how Amazon SES uses Transport Layer Security, or TLS. Our SMTP endpoint requires that all connections be encrypted using TLS. The SMTP endpoint uses TLS wrapper mode, which requires that SMTP clients will initiate the connection using TLS encryption. Wrapper mode means that the Amazon SES SMTP endpoint does not perform start TLS negotiation. It is the client's responsibility to connect to the endpoint using TLS and to continue using TLS for the entire conversation. Again, at this time, Amazon SES does not support start TLS negotiation. If your system does not support TLS wrapper mode, you can use S-Tunnel, which you'll find at www.stunnel.org, or a similar program to set up a secure tunnel. We're actually going to look at S-Tunnel shortly. So now I'll go through two examples of how to implement S SMTP with Amazon SES. First, we'll walk through setting it up with Microsoft Outlook 2010. This example should give you guidance for configuring it with any software that can send via SMTP. Then we'll take a look at PostFix, which is less graphically interesting, but will also allow me to show you how S-Tunnel works. This is an example of how to configure a program with a graphical user interface to use SMTP with Amazon SES. I'm going to use Microsoft Outlook 2010 for this example, as I said, but the same principles would apply to similar programs like Jira or whatever you're using. In Outlook, you go to the File menu, click on Account Settings, and choose Account Settings. In the Account Settings window, click on New. In the Add New, dial new Account dialog box, make sure Email Account is selected and click Next. In the next window, select Manually Configure Server Settings or Additional Server Types and then click Next. On the Choose Service window, choose Internet Email and then click Next. We're clicking Next a lot. Here's the more interesting screen where we actually get to set it up. On the Internet Email Settings form, the one you see here, fill in the following fields. For your name, type the friendly name from which you'll be sending the emails. For email address, put in the email address from which you'll be sending emails. Please note that this must be a verified email address. For account type, select IMAP or POP3, depending on what your incoming mail server is. If you don't have an incoming mail server, you can select IMAP to, in order to follow this example. For your incoming mail server, put in your incoming mail server. 
Um, you should note that Amazon SES does not provide incoming mail servers, only outgoing. Outlook requires, however, that you fill in this field. So if you don't have an incoming mail server, go ahead and type the word none into this field. In the outgoing mail server field, this is where you type in the server that you saw back on your SMTP page. So that's email-smtp.us-east-1.amazonaws.com. And then in the username blank, type the word none, because we'll be configuring your credentials in a bit. Then click on the More Settings button. In the Internet Email Settings window that appears, click on Outgoing Server. Make sure My Outgoing Server Requires Authentication is selected. Then select Log in Using and put your SMTP username and password in the available spaces. Make sure you're using the SMTP credentials that you generated in the AWS Management Console using the steps that we walked through earlier. Then make sure that Remember Password is checked off. And once you're finished here, click on the Advanced tab. Here at the Advanced tab, you'll want to fill out the following fields. For Outgoing Server, enter port 465. Then select SSL as the type of encrypted connection. If you need to fill in any settings for your incoming mail server, do that as well. And when you're finished with that, click the OK button. This will take you back to the Internet Email Settings screen. You'll want to test your configuration by clicking the Test Account Settings button. This lets you test your setup by having Outlook send an email through Amazon SES. If the test message that Outlook sends through Amazon SES arrives successfully, click the Next button which will take you to the congratulations screen. You're now ready to send email through Amazon SES with Outlook, and you can click the Finish button to exit. Now let's talk about using Amazon SES SMTP with PostFix. I'll first talk about using S-Tunnel in order to set up TLS wrapper mode, and then we'll talk about the PostFix configuration itself. Not every application might be directly compatible with the SMTP interface's strong TLS encryption environment. If that's the case, again, as I've said before, you use S-Tunnel, which provides a local plain text or vanilla SMTP interface for your application and handles encrypted communication with Amazon SES under the covers. You should actually note that S-Tunnel can be used whenever you need start TLS and, and you might be running something that, that doesn't natively support it. So to set up S-Tunnel, you go to www.stunnel.org and download and install it. Once you've done that, you open the slash etsy slash s-tunnel slash s-tunnel.conf file. If that file does not exist, create it. Add the lines you see here to configure the secure tunnel. For the accept line, specify a port number that is outside the range of reserved ports and is not currently being used. For this example, we'll use port 2525, but you can use a different port. Then save the file. To activate the tunnel, go to a command prompt and type in sudo stunnel slash etsy slash stunnel slash stunnel.conf. Next, we want to verify that the tunnel has been created. At your command prompt, type in telnet localhost 2525 or whatever port you specified in the stunnel.conf file. If you cannot establish the telnet connection, you should make sure the settings in the stunnel.conf file are correct. If you've been successful, you're finished with the stunnel setup and you can move on to your server configuration. For PostFix configuration, I'm assuming that you already have a mail server set up. PostFix doesn't natively support the TLS wrapper mode, so make sure you've already set up S-Tunnel, just like we did here. Open the etsy slash postfix slash main.cf file and add the lines you see here. Again, we're using port 2525 as the S-Tunnel port, but you'll have to use whatever port you used in your S-Tunnel configuration. Now we're going to create an encrypted file containing your Amazon SES SMTP credentials. First edit the slash 
Etsy slash postfix slash, goodness gracious, <laughs> sassel underscore password file. If the file does not exist, create it. Add the following line to the file, replacing username and password with your SMTP username and password. These are the same credentials I showed you how to create using the SES tab of the AWS Management Console. Save that file. To encrypt the file, um, type the line you see here at the command prompt, and then remove the, the etsy slash postfix slash sassel underscore password file. Finally, restart postfix by typing the command to restart it at the command prompt. I've um, put some, an example here, but the command might not be exactly the same as this one for your server. You should be able to send email via Amazon SES at this point. If you cannot, you should make sure that port 465 isn't blocked on your firewall, and you can do that by trying to telnet to it. I wanted to briefly talk about the support resources that we have available for you. I'll go through our documentation, our forums, and our extended access form. We have three different resources in our documentation for you, and you can get to these via the documentation link on the SES homepage, which is at aws.amazon.com slash SES. The first is the Amazon Simple Email Service Getting Started Guide. The guide will walk you through the getting started steps that I showed you earlier in this webinar in a little more detail. The second is the Amazon Simple Email Service Developer Guide. This guide gives you all of the detail you will need in order to set up your system to send email through Amazon SES. The third is the Amazon Simple Email Service API reference. This reference contains all of the Amazon SES API calls, parameters, and data types you can use if you're using the API. Next is the forum. I have to admit, I particularly enjoy the Amazon SES forum, which you can get to via the community forum link on the SES page or through your management console. Here you'll find all of our product and feature announcements, but I have to admit, that's not what I find most interesting. Here's where our SES users ask and answer questions about the service. You'll also find almost every member of the Amazon SES team on here quite often answering those questions. We read every single post on these forums, whether or not we answer, and we take your questions, concerns, and suggestions very seriously. The final resource I wanted to discuss was how you increase your sending limits. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, if you send production email through SES after you gain production access, your quota should naturally increase to meet your business needs. Somehow, sometimes, however, there are business events that make natural ramping impractical. To handle those cases, please click on the Request Increase Sending Limits link in the Management Console. This will take you to the Amazon SES Extended Access Request Form. We use the information you enter into this form to make sure that you have the quota you need for your business. Please fill out this form completely and let us know why you will need a manual quota increase and to what level. You might have a big launch coming up or your Facebook game is showing the signs of going viral, you can only hope. Please try to give us a good idea of exactly what your quota will need to be so that we can make sure that we put you in the correct tier. Note that this request usually takes one business day to process, so you will want to plan ahead. If we require more information in order to process your request, someone will get in touch with you. Please note that we will advise you of your request results in an email that will be sent to the email address associated with that AWS account. Or you can check your quota through the Management Console or through the Get Send Statistics API call. In the console, you can see your quota, how much of it you have used, and your maximum send rate. When your quota is increased either naturally or via a manual adjustment, you'll see it right here. And that's using SMTP with Amazon SES. We tried to build the features that we thought you would find most useful, and we've really appreciated your initial feedback. If you want to tell us what you think or request any features at any time, please visit our forums and tell us. Your input directly influences our product development. We love our customers and want to make sure that we're developing features to meet your needs. Now I'll turn over the mic to Chris and Justin, who will be answering some of the questions that came in while I was asking. Oh, sorry, while I was talking. Guys, 
Over to you. We have a question from the audience. What happens if I exceed the TPS? Will the emails be blocked or does AWS send them later? Dealing with quota can be difficult. We include a section in our developer guide dedicated to managing your quota. If your application exceeds the allocated rate of emails that you can send per second or the rate that you can send on a daily basis, Amazon SES will return an error code to you indicating that you have exceeded your instantaneous or daily quota. At that point, your application will need to slow down this request rate and issue requests later. This is the case both for the SMTP interface as well as the HTTP interface. Some users have found it helpful to configure a mail server in front of their requests in between their application and SES and set up the mail server to automatically retry the requests if they hit their maximum quota or maximum TPS rate. There are examples of how to do this on the forums. Thanks, Justin. Uh, we have another question here uh, from someone asking um, if SES could replace a third-party ESP instance uh, or if this should be a feeder into that a account. And I believe the question is, um, SES can't, well, to, to recap, uh, how can SES be used with other ESP type offerings, email service providers, and there are a number of them out there. Um, you can choose to send your mail directly through SES by invoking SMTP or calling the API directly, or if your uh, third-party email provider that you currently use uh, also supports SMTP, you can point uh, our mail through their system uh, if they allow it. So it just really is a case-by-case -case, um, uh, situation. I have another question here which asks about headers, uh, specifically uh, trying to support a priority header. Um, we have in our documentation a, an appendix which lists all the approved headers uh, that you can send through SES, and we're constantly striving to update that list. So uh, if you have any suggestions, and we'll take this one under account, uh, we will review and uh, determine whether it's, uh, uh, you know, it makes sense. Uh, in the short term, though, if the header you're trying to send in your mail is not listed in the uh, appendix, then uh, you will not be able to send that, that message successfully through SES. Please note, though, that we do accept any X dash headers, uh, which you can, uh, as long as you specify the X dash, you can put whatever value behind that, and SES will support that. I've also gotten some questions here around uh, what areas uh, SES will support, uh, regions specifically. So um, if you look in the FAQ for SES, we do mention that uh, plans are coming uh, for supporting SES internationally. I can't go into much more detail than that, though, uh, at this time. We are looking at the, the, uh, where we're seeing the highest level of demand uh, around the world, and I do anticipate uh, ex you know, support being uh, uh, internationalized. I I'm going to say uh, soon very loosely, <laughs> so no one hold me to any commitments here, uh, but we do understand that uh, right now the U.S. East endpoint is not uh, sufficient for everyone's needs. So thanks for that question. I have a high transaction product with lots of workflows based on notifications. I am sending the emails today using my EC2 instance. What's the advantage, if any, of switching to Amazon SES? One of the, am the advantages that Amazon SES gives you is that we are a high quality email sending channel. We carefully protect the messages that are sent through Amazon SES and, and, and guarantee to the best of our abilities that, that only legitimate and high quality traffic will be sent from Amazon SES. This means that ISPs will typically give SES a leg up in its ability to deliver messages to recipient inboxes. Beyond that, Amazon SDS will help you send at an extremely high rate. Your application can make API calls to Amazon SES, and Amazon SES will buffer those messages and send them out for you with an extremely high volume, internally taking advantage of parallelism and the high scale of the Amazon cloud. It also takes care of reliability properties, for example, once your application calls the send email API, you know that Amazon SES will deliver the message. By comparison, with a local mail server running on EC2, once you transmit a message into that mail server, there's a chance that that, that EC2 instance will terminate. That's part of the model of EC2, that an, instance, that an instance can terminate. So this means that if you're using your local mail server, you must administrate your mail server and worry about local queues, as well as worrying about the IP address that you're using 
and protecting its reputation. We have another question. How do you handle massive bounces for one AWS customer with other customers? Amazon SES carefully tracks each customer's mail sending separately. We're able to determine which customer sent a bounce uh, and which ones have not. We'll send the bounces on to you when we receive them. If we detect a problem with your sending, we'll, we'll contact you. Uh, we have a probation process where we let you know about problems that we've detected in your sending. For example, we might say that 1,000 out of your last 10,000 messages have bounced, and this gives you an opportunity to look for a problem in your sending and correct it. Thanks, Justin. Uh, we've Thanks, Justin. We've also received several questions around how uh, the limits work for sending mail. And just to recap what, uh, what Jen spoke about during the presentation, uh, SES has two, um, two metrics that are used to determine how, f uh, how you can send mail through the system. One is your daily quota, and that's the amount of mail that you can send within a 24-hour period. And the other one is how fast you can send mail, or what we consider the TPS, or the transactions per second. Uh, at this time, uh, SES does not offer queuing, so at the time a, uh, a message is attempted to be handed off to SES via SMTP or uh, via uh, API, if you have hit your limit, uh, either for the volume or the, uh, the, the, the send rate, then that message will, will not be successfully sent on your behalf and you'll receive an error in response. Um, now, again, to reiterate, though, we, we understand that uh, some folks have some bursty type uh, mailing behavior where they can't quite anticipate what their uh, send rate is going to be at all times, and it might not fi nicely fit into whatever the, the, or, you know, the organic growth that uh, SES uh, uh, allows in movement through those, those uh, uh, areas for the daily quota and for the, the, the sending rate. And that's when you can uh, send uh, or, or uh, submit rather the extended access request form and that's where you uh, describe the situation why you think your particular use case won't work with the, um, the, the, the process we have in place to grow your quota and we will take that under advisement and um, hopefully be able to get back to you with uh, whatever uh, uh, sending rate or volume you're looking to hit. Thanks Chris. Another question from the audience. Are there any instructions on how to set up an EC2 Red Hat instance to send email through SES? The examples I have seen have, have been for Microsoft Outlook. Uh, it, we provide instructions in our developer guide, uh, both for integrating with Microsoft Outlook as well as for integrating with a number of mail servers. We include instructions for Postfix, for SendMail, and for Exim. We include those instructions under the using the SMTP interface to send email section. And those instructions describe how to use the SMTP interface to send email uh, with those mail servers. The advantage of having your mail server send through SES is that you get the reliability, uh, the sending speed, and the reputation of SES compared to having your mail server send it out directly. Another question is about how to diagnose uh, this email address is not verified exceptions. One thing to be aware of. Uh, when you receive an email address is not verified error is that Amazon SES is currently case sensitive on email addresses which means that if you verify user at example.com in lowercase you cannot send from capital user at example.com this is a limitation that we have included in the product directly uh, however uh, all limitations are something that we carefully consider in the context of user experience uh, and if you have feedback about uh, how the system works, we'd be happy to hear about it on the forums. Uh, when you are attempting to troubleshoot uh, problems with air codes like that, email address not verified, uh, a technique which is really helpful is, is trying to see exactly what your mail server is sending, if you're using a mail server, or exactly what your application is passing in. Uh, when you see an email address that, that hasn't worked for you, you can attempt to reproduce uh, that same email send call by going to the AWS Management Console, clicking on the SES tab and attempting to send email from that same email address. Back to you, Chris. Great. So uh, we've received another question asking if we scan outgoing mail for uh, you know, malware and, and other nefarious things uh, uh, when users uh, hand off messages to our system. The answer is yes. Uh, we do scan all outbound messages uh, using industry standard and leading uh, uh, technology to ensure that uh, outbound messages do not contain um, 
uh, any any harmful attachments uh, or uh, hit uh, a predefined uh, um, definition of what spam is. Um, another question is, what are the advantages of using SMTP API over uh, Amazon uh, previously available web services API? This really is, I'm not going to say you should use one or the other. It, de it depends on whatever your particular use case is. Whatever is easiest for you to, uh, to use to, to uh, take advantage of SES. If you want to code directly to the API uh, because your infrastructure supports that type of uh, setup, then by all means do. Otherwise, uh, you can use SMTP as well if you have existing email infrastructure that already speaks SMTP. The behavior is the same, though, in terms of uh, how the messages are sent from Amazon SES out to your recipients, as well as the, the limits in place. Justin? Great. Uh, another question we have is, uh, my product is hosted at AWS as well as another non-Amazon data center. Can I use SES to send messages from both AWS and non-AWS servers? Uh, is the pricing the same? Are there any difference in limits? There are no difference in limits. Uh, your limits will be exactly the same whether you call SES from within the AWS data center uh, or from another data center. Uh, you can call us from both places. The, we do have a difference in pricing. Uh, if you call us from EC2, uh, we do not charge for inbound data transfer. Uh, the charge for outbound data transfer is the same. Uh, and we also offer a small free tier if you're calling us from instances running on EC2. Uh, I also wanted to, to briefly touch on a previous question about how we handle bounces uh, from other Amazon AWS customers. Uh, in addition, in addition to the guarantees that I discussed before, uh, one thing that we also do is attempt to isolate customers from each other uh, as much as possible onto separate IP addresses uh, within the ranges that we have. Uh, this, helps, this helps ensure that if you are sending legitimate traffic and another customer is having difficulties with his email sending uh, or difficulties with an ISP, uh, this will help protect uh, your traffic uh, from his. Uh, another question that we've received, if one has a quota of one email per second uh, and has not exceeded his daily sending quota, what happens if several emails are sent in a burst, but the daily quota is not exceeded? What will happen in that case? Does SES return an error? Amazon SES does not strictly enforce the instantaneous quota. Uh, in other words, if your quota is one per second, then you might be able to send slightly more than, than one message per second. And it's important to understand that the quota is not on the number of messages that you send, but is on the number of recipients. So if you send an email that has five people on the two line, then Amazon SES will separately deliver a message to each one of those five recipients' inboxes. And a message with five recipients would consume five recipients from your instantaneous quota and your daily quota. So we will not strictly enforce the instantaneous quota. Uh, if your quota is one per second, then you can still send slightly above that. We, we do have some built-in leniency. However, both of the, qu the quotas are separately enforced. This means that if your quota is one per second, then it is possible for you to be throttled even if your quota, your daily quota has not yet been reached. This is also deliberate. Uh, it's designed to ensure that your sending ramps up uh, carefully over time. Um, thank you very much. Back to Chris. Thanks. I also received another question here uh, with someone asking about a particular ISP they're using to connect to Amazon SES via SMTP and a limit that ISP is imposed. Um, if you have limits on your side from your ISP uh, and you're trying to push messages across via SMTP to SES, uh, SES has no visibility into what your limits are. Um, if the limit is uh, great. If, if your limit at the ISP is less than what the limit of SES will be in terms of, and like Justin was mentioning, uh, um, the, the limits, you know, the, the email volume per day and then the, also the uh, uh, sending rate limits, then your ISP will most likely block you from further SMTP attempts to SES. Uh, SES, uh, you know, doesn't care because it just recognizes its own, uh, uh, its own limits. So, 
I would suggest in situations like that where you're concerned that maybe there is a disconnect between your ISP limits and what SES limits are to further investigate exactly what those limits are at your ISP and see uh, if they fall above or below uh, SES. And then obviously if the limits fall above what SES has and you feel that there's a need to hit those higher limits then you can submit an extended, limit, uh, uh, extended access request form to increase your limits in SES. Um, Justin? Back to me. Uh, a couple of uh, a couple of audience members have asked, "What are the advantages of using the SMTP API um, over Amazon's previously available web service API?" So both of the APIs are available to you, and you should feel free to use whichever API is most convenient at the time. Uh, one primary reason that we've ma we've made the SMTP API available is because it is a widely known and widely supported internet standard technology. What this means is that you may be able to take your existing application which sends email and directly configure it to send through Amazon SES without writing any code. That's the primary advantage of the SMTP API. If you're writing a new program from scratch and you simply need to decide whether to call one API or the other, you may wish to look at what libraries are available for your language and what tools are built on top of those libraries. All other things equal, we do recommend that you call the HTTP API. There are fewer network round trips available. I'm sorry, there are fewer, fewer network round trips necessary when making HTTP calls than SMTP calls. What this means is that you'll likely see a little bit better performance from the HTTP API. And that's the, that's the way we recommend that you call Amazon SES uh, if you have no other constraints. Additionally, we have a little bit more flexibility to accept different input options from HTTP uh, and provide detailed output as well to you. Uh, for example, as we launch new Amazon SES features in the future, those features will, will likely be exposed as parameters to the HTTP API, but it may not be possible to utilize those same parameters through SMTP since it is a, a very well-defined and strict protocol. Thanks. Back to Chris. I've got another question here um, around what happens if uh, SES IPs uh, or subnets happen to find themselves on blacklists uh, because of customer uh, activity. Um, and just to give a real quick uh, recap, when you send mail through SES via SMTP or via the API or HTTPS, um, that message uh, data, if you will, with the headers and, and the body, are uh, then taken, composed in SES, and sent through the SES IP infrastructure. So these are IPs that uh, SES owns and maintains and manages. So uh, we do have an active staff that is monitoring the health of these IPs on a daily basis. We obviously take this very seriously. Uh, one of our um, um, uh, uh, cornerstones of the service is reliability and obviously uh, being reliable uh, in this term is, is directly um, uh, related to the, the impact of deliverability for your mail. So please know that we are monitoring the IP space uh, constantly. Uh, we can't go into details about specific events that have occurred in the past, but uh, we, we do not, um, this is something that we uh, uh, work very actively to make sure that is, is in, good, in a good state. Um, in addition to that, I also want to, and this wasn't specifically a question, but I'd like to just add on, we do offer uh, information in the documentation around how to authenticate your mail, uh, both with uh, SPF and sender ID, and then also with DKIM. So uh, if you are interested more in learning about uh, you know, how to improve deliverability from your perspective of your mail, uh, authentication is a great place to, uh, to, to, to catch up on and uh, we offer instructions there on how to make sure that you're compliant with both uh, or all three of those, uh, those standards. Another question, from the Another question from the audience, is it possible to use uh, GNU Mailman with Amazon SES? Uh, I, I'm not specifically available with that product, uh, but, but when, when you want to integrate a new application with Amazon SES, uh, typically what you want to look for in Linux software uh, is a command so that that program will run when it wants to deliver email. Uh, a common way of doing it is the mail server or program will invoke a, sp a particular command and pass the email that it wants to send to standard in. Uh, so so look, for, look for something like that. Uh, a lot of mail servers work this way. GNU 
mailman might work that way. Uh, and you can use the existing Amazon SES command line tools uh, to, to fill that role. Uh, and then configure mailman to call the command line tools and then the command line tools will call Amazon SES. Uh, we also had a question about uh, does Amazon SES uh, identify which email addresses have bounced? Uh, the products 10 cent email and glock easy email may not be exposing that information, uh, but I did want to confirm that Amazon SES will forward you every complaint and every bounce that we receive in response to your sending traffic. Uh, those bounces and complaints, which we call feedback, will be sent to your source address, uh, which is also expressed as the return path address in the send raw email, uh, and will be expressed as the mail from address with SMTP. But all feedback we receive uh, in response to your sending will be forwarded on directly to you, uh, and you can uh, process it and look at it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Chris and Justin, for... Um, taking those questions and thank you so much for everyone everyone for attending today's webinar this that wraps up today's presentation um, you'll receive a follow-up email with a link to this recorded presentation along with the link to the presentation itself I encourage all of you to periodically check the webinar section of AWS in order to see listings of other upcoming webinars or virtual events you can go to aws.amazon.com slash resources slash webinars on behalf of Amazon Web Services and our presenters, thank you for joining us today to learn more about Amazon's simple email service.